Hi everyone. I wanted to um, go through a 2D array question in a bit more detail and I'll, I am going to do a couple of these because um, I know that this is something that possibly makes a few people feel a bit uncomfortable, you're still sort of like not too sure about it and I really want to try and get you to start understanding that actually you can do this. So we have been given this table, this matrix, okay, and we've been told 0, 1, 2, 0 and 1. Each one of the rows in the table is a mini array inside a main array. And I really want you to start kind of like getting used to that and maybe visualizing it as an array because I think that's how it's going to get easier for you to answer this code because you're used to seeing it as an array. So I've created this because this is actually what it would look like, okay? So we've got discount and each one of these rows is oh, sorry is a mini array okay so we've got this one so we've got the two open square brackets that's showing we've got a 2d array but the one square bracket is the discount so the main discount array and then it just so happens that inside that main discount array each one of the elements is itself an array and it's one of these rows so we've got pvfc7 and 10, you'll see is that first row there. We've got CPU5 and 5 as that second row there. And we've got BGF2 and 15 as the third row there. Now let's make it a little bit simpler again. I want you to get used to seeing this. If I then put the index numbers, and this is for the main discount array. So this is index 0, so discount 0. This is discount 1 and this is discount 2. However, if I were to say, let's say, print discount 1, it would actually print like a little mini array, CPU 5, 5. So all it would do, it was actually just print that one element, and it just so happens to be like that array itself. So we then know that when we have 2D arrays, that we can dig a little deeper, and each one of the items inside the, the array is um, also has an index number. Now, the reason I wrote here is the discount, the length of discount is three items, okay? That's important to know um, because that's what's going on down here, size equals len discount. But we know that the index needs to be zero to two, which is why we always do the minus one. The length of discount is three, but we need to minus one so that we can then say in our for loop, zero, two, and this would be size, um, which is two at the moment. So really importantly, again, this is future proofing it because you never know there might be more and more and more um, items in that table or more and more mini arrays in this 2D array. And so future proofing it is basically saying, let's just find the length of it. So then if the length is, is four items, then it will become zero to three because of lend discount minus one. So let's have a look again then at now these new index numbers. So discount zero brings me to this mini array, but discount zero, zero brings me to specifically PVFC7, okay? And the example they've given us is discount two, zero. So discount two, so it, we look at the mini array inside there, and then we look at zero, inside there discount two zero we look at we find the mini array and then we find the item inside that mini array which is bgf2 and you can see that's what they've written there for us okay so now let's have a look here the only reason this is quite complicated is because it's also talking about a um, a function a sub program as well we've realized that the customer is sending through the price of the product and they've also got a discount code and they're putting in let's just say at the moment one of these three again it might be many more than that but at the moment let's just say one of those three codes so all we're looking for is we're going to look through our array to look for the code and then when we find that code we want to just find out well how much discount does it have so the reason we've got discount x0, x comma 0, is 
we know that x is going to change each time we go through the for loop, which is why we have this next x. Remember, the next x allows us to then go, okay, x starts at 0, next x, x becomes 1, next x, x becomes 2, and so on. So let's just have a look at this. If discount x, 0, x starts at 0, so we are basically saying discount x, which is 0, and then it, it makes always you do zero. It's not it's not counting through these. So zero zero is PVFC seven. And it's saying if that is equal to the code that was brought in through the um through the uh, through as a parameter through to the to, through to the subprogram. If it's equal to this one, then do this. Otherwise, go through the for loop again. X is going to equal one. So now we go to discount. 1 and we look at 0 because remember 0 doesn't change so we're always just looking at I'm sorry I keep accidentally hitting the wrong key but we always keep looking at uh, this now is x but we always look at 0 so now we're looking at CPU 5 and we're just looking to see is that the code that they sent through now I did just say to you let's say they sent BGF2 so no it wouldn't be so we go back up here x is now equal to 2 and so we're going to be looking at discount 2, 0. So 2, 0 is this one. And 0, BGF2. And so therefore, yes, they now are equal to each other. So we then go to look at changing our price because we're looking to take a discount from the price that the person has sent through. Now we've put that price into the variable new price. And so we've got new price is equal to, and what we're going to do is we're going to say whatever new price is now, minus, and what we're doing again here is we're looking into the, um, the 2D array, and we're saying now we want to minus x1. And if we look at this here, we're going to minus, and we, we've already, we stayed on x, x is still 2, remember, we haven't moved on within our for loop, we're still x is equal to 2, so 2 and 1, and so therefore we're going to look at this 15, okay? And so discount x1 is 15, so it's going to be new price minus 15. All this line of code here is doing is, is kind of diving into or delving into the array to find uh, a piece of data that piece of data so happens to be the number 15 and so therefore new price is equal to whatever new price is now minus 15 the only thing we need to remember is that because it's a function it returns a value to the main program because this is remember a main program has called this function has sent the price and the code through to it for it to do the little calculation to find out how much the how much the actual uh, discount is and find out a new price and then it returns that new price back to the main program and the main program now will have whatever that new price is um, for the um, the customer to pay so if we start if you can start in the exam if you get a 2d array like this if you write it out like this, spend some time on this, write it out so that you can actually visualize it as a 2D array. Write your, um, write, write your sort of like your main index numbers for each element inside that 2D array, and then write your index numbers for each element inside each mini array. You're going to find this much easier to then work through and understand. Okay, so we have another 2D array question here, um, and I want you to see, so we've, we, it's been put into a matrix, and again, you must make sure you read all of the information. So it says, data for week one, um, Monday to Friday, is stored in a 2D array with the identifier mins played. The following table shows part of this array containing four students. The teacher wants to output the number of minutes Dan, in column index 3, played computer games on Wednesday, which is row index 2. And the following code is written. Print mins played 3, 2. Now, 
This is where it gets so important to always use the example given because quite often when we work in 2D arrays we will go uh, down kind of like the, the row first and then we will find the column and this is really important and that's why they've given you this example because they are getting you to now see that the first number is the column number and then the second number is the uh, the row number two, so three two. So this first question should be relatively simple as long as you follow the example that they've given. And it says write a line of code to output the number of minutes that Stuart played computer games on Friday. So we need to look to see, and so it was three um, three two, which was Dan Wednesday. So what we want to do is we want to do Stuart Friday. We can see Stuart is zero and we can see Friday is four. And so actually our code is as simple as saying print and you must make sure this is you have to write this in um, program code. So um, they are looking for any kind of mistake. So you've got to make sure min's played. You can see that this is using camel case uh, open square bracket and we said Stuart which is zero and then comma and Friday which is four. Now don't forget you close your square bracket and then you close your your round bracket which is the print and that was your one marker. Now the next question we are still um, staying on to this 2D array and the next question says the teacher writes a program to add up and print out the total number of minutes student two played computer games over five days Monday to Friday. And you'll see here that they've given us the code. So we start off by declaring total, total equals zero. And then all we're doing is we're adding to that total. Okay, so we're just basically adding up total over and over and over again. So new total equals whatever total is now plus. And then we're looking here, we've got mins played. And then you'll see here it's column two, and it's that student two. And then row zero. Remember, row zero is Monday. If we jump back, You'll see here, therefore, it's Victoria, and then it's zero. So two, zero is 45. So total equals total plus, and it will be 45. Total now holds 45. Then it will say here, now new total equals, what to total is now, which is now 45, plus, and it says min's played 2, 1. Well, again, now it's again Victoria, and this time Tuesday, 1, and you'll be adding zero to it. So total stays at 45 and it will go through that and you'll see that the only thing that is changing is the number for the day. Victoria stays the same. So two stays the same and it is the second number. It is the, the row number that changes and you'll see here that we've even got the index numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So actually, as much as this is quite confusing, sorry, it does say refine the program to be more efficient and write the refined version of the algorithm. So really what they're asking for us to do here is they're asking this at the moment is just sequence and clearly this can be written as iteration. And you'll see that the two doesn't change, but the only thing that does change is the row <coughs> number and therefore we can use a for loop. And so let's let's just have a look at this. So we still need to declare total to be zero. And then we need to create our for loop. And it doesn't matter what you decide to write in here. So for x equals, and we know it always starts at zero, two. And we know we need to go from zero to four because there are five um, rows. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Zero, one, two, three, four. So zero to four. Remember this this line of code here at the moment is saying absolutely nothing about what we're doing. We're just saying do something five times. And you can see one, two, three, four, five. We're doing something five times. And what we're actually doing five times is this adding to total. So don't forget, you need to indent total equals total plus. And we're still saying mins played, open square bracket. And remember, the two does not change any time. It's only this number here that changes. And remember, all you're using the x for is a counting variable. And x is going to become 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And it's exactly what we need there. So we're going to close that square bracket there. Don't forget to put your next x there, which just shows 
that it will then loop up x increments to 1, it does this, 2, 1, next x, x increments to 2, so therefore it would be 2, 2, next x, x increments to 3, and so on. And then finally, don't forget, you do need to then print total at the end of it. And remember, that's not indented. That We now finish that for loop and we now print total. Once the for loop is finished, total will have that absolute total in there. And then you print that final there. So these lines of code here, you get turned into a relatively short and uh, simple for loop. I hope that has helped. Let me see if I can find one more 2D array question for you. Okay, so this is from a J276 paper, but it's still a 2D array question uh, that could come up in uh, the J277 exam. So let's have a look. This first part of it is all information. There's no question here. And it's so important to read this information and really take it in. So let's have a read. It says OCR blocks is a game played on a 5x5 five five grid. Players take it in turns to place blocks on the board. The board is stored as a two-dimensional array with the identifier game grid. Figure 6.1 shows that players A and B have placed three blocks each so far. So remember that we can turn a 2D array into a table or a matrix. Okay, So again, it's the exact same principle. We're looking at 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. But the important thing, again, is we have to read the information that we've been given to make sure that we're going down the rows first and then the columns or the columns and the rows. We need to check. So the information that we've been given is we've been told that we have a function, and the function is called check block. It says the function check block checks whether a square on the board has been filled. When check block 4, 2 is called, the value A is returned. This is so important. You need to now go and check what 4, 2 is. Are we talking 4 here and 2? Or are we talking 4 and 2? And as you can see here, it is therefore rows, then columns. So 4, so we go down the rows first. And then we go across the columns to the 2, and that says A. And it's so important, please, 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 always, always use the information they give to you to help you with, this, um, with, the, with the questions. But let's also now read the function that they've written, because we do need to have an understanding of this. Now, it looks more complicated than it is. So first of all, we know it's a function, so we know it's going to return some data to the main program. And you'll see there, return outcome. Okay? We know that it's called check block, that's what we were told, and we can see here that it's receiving two parameters. And you'll see there, that's 4, 2, but actually it's receiving them, and they've, they've named it R and C, which, if you think about it, row and column, okay? So we've got R, comma C, R being the 4 in this case, and C being the 2 in this case. We've then got an if statement. If game grid, the name of the array, and then R comma C is equal to A, or if game grid R comma C is equal to B, then outcome equals game grid R C. So it's just going to equal the um, whether it's an A or a B inside it. It's just going to output whatever is inside that um, that that, that uh, box. Okay, that grid else and it's going to tell us the outcome is free so it means that the box is empty so for instance if we sent through um if we sent through check block uh four three for instance and if you think here four and then we go across to row three which is this one here then we should get the outcome of free and therefore we return outcome so you're either returning to your main program the word free, or you're going to return either A or B, whichever is in the grid. So now let's have a look at the first question. So it says, give the returned value when the following statements are called. So what this is now doing is it's checking that you have, in fact, read and understood 
that um, piece of code and that you're able to understand that it's the row then the column so let's have a look so check block two comma one we know that it's row then column and then we go back to the block and we know remember it is row then column it tells us there and so two in the row and then zero one in the columns and we can see that it is the letter b and so the returned value to the main program will be the letter b now let's look at the next one so it says check block three comma zero so again what we're going to do is we're going to row three column zero and it's the letter a so we can go back to here and put in the letter a and then finally check block two comma three so let's go back row two column three zero one two three and you can see that this is blank and so therefore we can then say you can remember look the outcome is free and so therefore now and don't forget, it's very important to make sure you're accurate. It is free in all capitals. So do be looking for small details like that. OK, state one feature of check block that shows that it is a function and not a procedure. Well, that should be relatively simple at this stage now. You know the difference between functions and procedures. And you can also see this is a function and it returns the outcome that is the main difference between functions and procedures and we can see that in place there and therefore we can say it returns the uh, value held in outcome to the main program there you go so it returns the value that's the most important thing there we know it's a function because it returns a value you probably don't even need to say the value outcome um, it returns a value to the main program is your main point that's the difference between functions and procedures right next question it says when check block minus one comma six is called an error is produced state why this function call will produce an error well I mean we can see that it's because it's minus one we know that um, all the numbers start at zero and they go up to four OK, so we know that we can't have anything lower than zero. Um, and remember, it's in the rows. So the zero is the, the smallest row number we've got. And then the columns go up to four and we were told six. So it's out of range. OK, this is an out of range error. Um, we don't have anything lower than zero and we don't have anything greater than four for either rows or columns. So state why this function call will produce an error. We can say it is out of range, um, cannot be uh, smaller than zero or greater than four for either rows or columns. OK, again, you could have probably just said it is out of range. So what have we got here? Describe how validation could be added into the check block function to stop this error from occurring. So this is a describe question. This is not asking us to write the validation routine. It's asking us to describe it. Now, remember, when we ever see anything about validation, you should be thinking there's probably three main ones that you need to think about. You've got range check, you've got presence check, and you've got length check. So range check is that something is falling between a certain range and it's usually numbers. You've got presence check that something has actually um, got something in it so that there is actually data in, um, in a variable. And you've got uh, length check and so therefore it might be that you have the length of a word and it needs to be a certain, uh, it can only be um, up to a certain number or needs to be greater than a certain number so so length check will check the length um, of characters so um, this one here we can see is a range check we are we need to stay within range and so actually that would be your first part of this answer because we're describing it we need to say we need to add a range check okay 
then we need to say well what is that range doing now this question here should have got you starting to think about that and we've already actually started thinking about that I would probably put that without needing to and so we need to say here um, check the user does not input a number uh, less than zero or greater than four when entering either the column or the row number okay um, what what happens if they do so there's there's three marks here so we need to have three clear points that's one telling it um, telling them it's a range check this is kind of saying what that range check is but what we need to say then is um, so tell the user this is an invalid uh, input and ask them to try again and you could put here maybe using a while loop which you don't necessarily again need to say but if you think about it the while loop a condition controlled loop if they get it wrong ask them to do it again okay there's your three marks so there's your validation describing how validation could be used in that check block function so that we don't get the error occurring okay otherwise we are just going to we're going to produce an error it's going to stop the program okay final question here write an algorithm to allow player a to select a position for their next block on the game board the algorithm must now please make sure you read all of the bullet points here because remember if it asks you to iterate through it you probably need to think about the iteration first so let's read through so we need to ask the player for the position of their block on the board we need to use the check block function to check if the position is free so remember we're going to just send the data through to the check block function and the check block function again is is um, is abstracted from us we don't now need to know how it works we just need to know that it returns a value and it will return either a B or free to us we know that we just use that check block function we just we've learned about it then it says if the position is free we want to add the letter a so if the choose if, if the player chooses remember it's player a if the player chooses a block that is free then we put their letter inside that block okay so we, we put that into the game grid array. However, if the position is not free, we need to repeat the above steps until there is a free position uh, chosen. So there's your iteration. And that's why we need to read all four of them before we, um, before we do the whole thing. So let's think this through. We've been asked to basically ask the user and they're going to, we're going to have to ask them for their row and their column. So it's two separate inputs. We're going to send the row and column data, okay, as parameters through the check block function, and we are going to have some data returned to us. So we need to assign whatever is returned to a variable. We're going to be using some uh, selection to see what was returned. But if the position is not free, so if free is false, then we need to ask them again. And so hopefully, um, we could say something like this um, oh, free equals false while free oh make sure you get that right is equal to false okay now this is where we ask our user to input because remember we will ask them to input over and over and over again so we ask them inside the while loop to input their data and remember we're having rows then columns so you could say row equals input please enter the row number okay and then we've got column equals input please enter the column number don't forget you don't have to say please every time um, and then what we're doing here is now that we've got the row and the column 
we're going to call this check block function but remember it's a function so we need to ret whatever is returned needs to be assigned to a variable okay so what we need to say is we need to say um, let's just call it position okay um, I think that's I'm gonna call it yeah if the position is free so let's just say position equals okay we're calling the check block function and make sure you get this right again it's all lowercase and we are sending row comma column now the check block function receives it um, in that order and remember that that's receiving it and then calling it R and C inside the function but because we've called them row and column in our main program that's what we send through so it's up to you if you want to just keep it simple and call that R and that C then you can send it through as R and C but make sure when you're, you're sending it through you're sending through the variable names that you have used in your main program so what's happening here is check block is sending through whatever the, the um, user has put in for the row number and whatever the user has put in for their column number check block is now going to go off run its code and it's going to return the outcome back to us and that return is going to be put into or the outcome return is going to be put into our variable name called position so position is going to hold either a b or free so what we now need to do is we now need to say if the position is free we need to add the letter a um, to the position chosen in the game grid array but if the position is not free, we need to ask them to do it again. Okay, so we've got an if statement because we're doing some we're doing some uh, selection here. If position is equal to, and remember, it was all capitals. Okay, if position is equal to free, then, and this is where we need to put into our game grid. So game grid and then we say row column equals a so we're putting into game grid in the row that they've selected and the column that they've selected if it was free we're going to put an a inside there so remember it's just a one equal sign because we are assigning a to this game grid row column now what we need to do don't forget we're in a while loop so we need to be able to kick ourselves out of the while loop at some point and it's at this point we need to do that so we had while well, free is equal to false which meant that the basically the grid point was not free so we're going to keep on asking but now free has actually become true because it was free and therefore we have been able to put the a inside it okay so the free equals true allows us now to get kicked out of that while loop because we don't need to keep asking them we're going to end if there and then we need to end while so that's it that's the actual um, program that you need so we're setting free to false okay so we are um, declaring free as false so that we can actually use it in our while loop if we hadn't declared it in the first place then if we said while well, free is equal to false it's going to say what's free we don't know what free is so we have to declare it first and then we can use it in our while loop and so what we're saying here is while we don't have a free uh, grid position to put a in then keep asking so then we ask the user for their row and their column we call the check block sending row and column to it and then whatever is returned from check block gets put into our variable position and then we look to see if the position is in fact free so if what was returned was the was the string free remember only a b or free could be sent through to it if the string was free then we can then put into the game grid in the row and the column that the user gave to us and we can actually say a and remember we are signing data to it so it's a one equal sign we then turn our variable free to true so remember one equal sign we're assigning true to it which will then when we go to the end well and come back up to check it will then tell us um, it will then kick us out of that while loop because we're done so this is how this works if if the position was not free 
and we go to the end if without changing it, free will not have been changed to true, and therefore we will come up here and free will still equal to false, and therefore it will ask us all again. It will keep going through it until we get to where the return value is free from the check block function. We put our A in there and we turn um, free into true so that we get kicked out of the while loop. I hope that has helped. I hope that has cleared up a few kind of like little difficulties for you. Um, and I really hope that these 2D array questions are helping for the exam. All the best.